I have here some Bansia seed pods. These are from the, uh, I guess, Bansia tree. I'm no expert on Australian uh, plants, but this is a super hard wood. And I saw these in a souvenir shop made into beautiful pieces of artwork. If you chop off the bottom and make it flat and the top, when you turn this on a lathe, you can make little decanters and jars and uh, key lights. So I'm going to experimentally spin one of these up and see what kind of things I can make. Mine are smaller round, so I won't make any tea lights with them. But I could possibly make a nice candle holder or um, little decanters or neat little things. So I'm just going to spin these up and see what I can make out of it. See how it looks. The ones at the souvenir shop were just beautiful pieces of art. And when they're sanded, they're just incredible. So, anyway, I have here a wood lathe in the shop. Today I have some time free. So, I'm hoping I can get this old thing working well. Doesn't look like it's been used in forever. But, uh, if I can get things adjusted right, I'll see what I can turn out of these things. I've shaved the ends off with a saw and hopefully I can get this this is a large lathe I'm hoping that I can get this to uh, to adjust on here for me I had to do some serious work to get the the thing to even fit It's rusty as well. Yeah, it's going to be some work on this to get this going. So I'll get this on there. I don't want to bore you with all the uh, little details, but I'll get this adjusted here. I almost forgot to prepare the wood. I haven't done this in many years. To prepare the wood for work, you have to cut the slit in it. I don't think this saw is any good. You have to have a slit in the wood to fit the uh, so the lathe can grip it and hold it firmly. Try to get it as centered as possible for less loss of the wood when you're working. Now I have a nice X pattern in here for the lathe to grip into. Now I've got it fitted. What I did is put a cross pattern down in here. Um, I got this on here so it's locked in and then you tighten this down and you set this in the hole there and then tighten it with a wrench. Now that's going to loosen up with time so I have to keep an eye on it and this is my blade rest which I have to still tighten down. It's very awkward because it's a massive lathe and I'm using a tiny little thing on it so it's going to be a little tricky at first but it turns on and spins for now so I'm just going to really carefully work until that uh, loosens up more. I don't have the proper tools to really um, mount that in the back right now but I've got a good grip for now, anyway. Now, I'm still getting the feel of this lathe, so you can see I've smoothed off a little bit of the rough edges here. And I'm just going to continue on. I'm still getting this uh, spinch tighten. It's very rusty. So, it's awkward. Once I get this set up, I'll be able to get to some serious work here and smooth this off and polish it and see what I can make out of this.
here. Now I'm just going very gently. I just want to smooth off the edges first. If something is rough, you really want to work it smoothly in the beginning. Look at it often to see what your how it looks. So I haven't even touched some of these lower spots. So what I need to do is get a uniform cut going on here. There's a very deep spot there, so I won't be able to hit that. I'll show you that closer up in a minute here. Out of my own way of the camera. Yeah. I want to go a little deeper in here. got a rounded tool so I'm getting in this this little indentation here make it smoother now I'm forming the wood a little bit nicer which also means lighter touch on the wood a lot gentler work in on here for me if you would. Okay. And you can see the, uh, the deeper cut I've made. And I still want to take a little bit off here to show us some of the inner wood. So I'm going to shave this down a little bit further right up in here. And then we're pretty much ready for sanding. This is a, a relatively quick pro process here. I've got my other flat edge tool. Alright, let me move my You can hear it hitting the sharper edges there. Yeah. 
you want to work it until it stops smacking it so hard, and then you know you got smoother wood. See here, you can hear it smoother wood there. Hear that? Yeah. And hear it smacking a lot. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. I think I'm going to make another indentation here. What do you think? Yeah. Just to make it look nice. Right in here. What do you think? I'll make another little indentation there. So we'll get the smooth red one. Or the round one. Let me see. Right here. Something else you gotta chew from time to time. Make sure everything's tight. If it starts to fly off, then you'll be in trouble. What do you think? Is it ready for sanding? We've got all the inner wood showing. I think it's ready, huh? Yeah. All right. What do we got here? We've got some uh, sanding sheets. 16 assorted, medium, fine. So we need some rougher. That's 16. That's other 80. Okay, we'll take some 80 for now. Mm -hmm. Now, just need a little bit.
sandpaper gets pretty hot when you work. You always yeah. got to be moving it or you'll actually melt the sandpaper. And it's starting to get finer. Now I've got a uh, 150 grit sandpaper and I'm polishing it up finely. I'd like to have a 320 or something but I uh, don't have any available. So I'm just going to continue on with the 150 for a few minutes and smooth it off as well as I can. It's starting to shine up a little bit now. I'd like to get it really super shiny. So I'll just keep sanding for a few minutes here and try to smooth this out nicely. <laughs> this is a this is a 400 grit sandpaper, and this is the slowest and longest part of the process. Polishing the wood up to a beautiful finish takes a long time and a lot of patience. Very light pressure. You start up pressing a little bit stronger and end up pressing lighter and lighter and lighter. And polish the wood to a super fine shine. See how it looks? It's going to take some time. It's not yet super shiny. It's getting there. It's going to take some more time to polish that. And then it'll be done. Ready to mount on a base. Now you can see a smooth surface. It's not as shiny as I want it yet. So now I'm using a white cloth. I'll show you. I can do this. I'm using a cotton cloth to polish this. And this is how I'm getting a mirror finish. Just very, very patiently working with the cotton cloth. And it's going to take some time. But I'm going to have a mirror finish when I'm done. Very smooth, shiny surface. Work of uh, extreme patience to make one of these, to turn anything in a lathe and turn it up nicely. If you want to do it in it right.
Well, there's my Banksia seed pod turned and polished so far. I want to polish it some more yet, but that's it for now. Now it rests for a little while. I want it to have a glossy mirror finish when I'm done. Now here I have one. Here I have a Banksia seed pod. You can see in comparison how it used to look. This one was just a little bit longer before I cut it to pieces. And I've turned it down. I want to make this a little bit narrower. Make a little rounded spot here and a little narrower here. And here I'm going to come to a peak, a little point. I'm going to narrow it down really fine right here. And this is staying like this. Here's the base. Right there you can see I've thinned it out. And I need to cut this down a little bit deeper. And then I'll polish the base, have it rounded up here. This is just sort of a roundish globe. Um, it's awkward on the top edges because you get this little rough stuff. Um, let me see if I can focus better. You get these rough spikes and edges on here. Hopefully I'll be able to sand it off and smooth it out. But for now, that's it so far. This one will be done in a day or so. It takes time turning it down. This is a couple hours of work turning it down because if you don't do it slow and careful, you'll break the ends off where it's in the lathe, which I already did. I had to re, I had to cut it off and redo it. So I lost a little bit of my my length that I had available. But you can see the the beauty that's going to come out of this when I sand it. It's really nice keep the focus proper there. It's going to be amazing when that's done. Here's the Banksia seed pot I was just showing. It's polished and oiled with um, linseed oil. I have to think about it in a minute. This is I cut on the lathe, I cut this down about to this depth here and then I used a hacksaw to cut it off when I was finished and here I carefully shaved it down until it broke off the lathe to give me a little bit of a point on that so that's the finished product there this is what you see look at the, the green the pattern side there, let me see if I can focus closer you can see the the pattern inside the core of this. I think it's just incredible. Each seed pod starts in the core of the whole thing. It's just beautiful. And this just stands up now on your table. Just a little showpiece. Here's a little bit of uh, natural art made out of a Australian Banksia seed pod. Hope you like it.